metal on metal hip replacements have been in use for just about as long as there have been hip replacements, and that goes back to about 1960. They were abandoned in the 60s because of some problems with manufacturing. What we then found is that some patients many years later still had some of those metal on metal implants. The ones that didn't fail were in service decades later with almost no sign of wear. So it rekindled an interest maybe 15 years ago. Uh, they reached a peak in popularity probably five years ago in this country. And then we started to see the problems that are being reported on in the newspapers and elsewhere of premature failures. And people have moved away from using them because of these failures. We really don't know everything we need to know about why they fail. And it's a real concern to many of us. So most of us have moved away from using them, although they still are FDA approved apart from a few that have been recalled. Many patients with metal-on-metal -metal hip replacements do fine. Um, what we are seeing, though, is that some patients don't do fine. And those that don't do fine sometimes fail pretty dramatically pretty early. What we're having trouble with is figuring out in advance who isn't going to do well with them so as to avoid using them, and whether there are technical elements of how they're inserted or how they're manufactured that also can contribute to these failures metal on polyethylene, slippery white plastic, very hard, very durable, wear resistant and slippery. If it were going to be a metal on metal implant, this ball on the stem would be similar and this shell would be similar, but where you see this white polyethylene or white plastic, there would be a solid piece of metal in there that's shiny, that's actually cobalt chrome, it would look like a shiny chrome surface. There are ceramic hip replacements, but those also have been in the news with some recalls and some catastrophic failures. So I would say at this point, most people are using metal on polyethylene. And that's mostly what we use at the university. If a patient doesn't know, it's worth finding out. Uh, it's important to know if you have a metal on metal device. And the easiest way to do that is to call your surgeon's office because your surgeon would know. Some of them relate to pain. Some of them relate to what look like inflammatory reactions, either in the tissue or excess fluid collections. And some are actual tissue damage, whether soft tissue or bone. Considering metal on polyethylene hips, which have been most of what we've used over most of the history of the specialty, about 1% per year get reoperated. So at the end of a decade, more than nine out of 10 are still going but about 10% have been reoperated in the first decade. Same thing goes in the second decade. By the end of 20 years, maybe 20 or 25% have been reoperated. So most are pretty durable out into the second decade and some beyond that. Um, durability of the newer devices, the metal on metal ones in particular, is unknown. And what's troubling us is that that number doesn't seem to be 1% per year, but may be higher, may be much higher. We're seeing in some metal on metal studies, failure rates of 15 or 20 percent at short term, five years. Most patients who've been through hip replacement say that it was manageable, but not a small intervention. A reoperation on a hip replacement is certainly as large as the first operation, but very frequently it's even a bigger uh, operation with more risk and more downtime. This is especially the case if there's been a lot of bone or tissue loss, as sometimes is the case with some of these metal on metal devices.